Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to show you how to install our full charging system kit for the Aprilia RSV4. Um, this also works on the Tuono uh, for a couple years. They showed the same motor. Um, so this is a really popular and uh, common upgrade and repair on these bikes. Um, the Kokusan flywheel on these uh, was known for problems and it's very common to have to replace the flywheel and the stator on these bikes if you haven't before. So we have a really nice low mileage uh, 2014 uh, Aprilia RSV4 factory here. Uh, the bike's in great shape um, and it, the charging system was working fine on this. So we're not doing this to solve a problem but we're doing preventative maintenance on this bike uh, and to go ahead and upgrade it for the guy and make sure he doesn't have any problems in the future. So our complete charging system kit is a uh, new stator and we have the new Kokusan flywheel and we have our RM stator MOSFET regulator and a gasket for the stator cover. So that's everything we include. Um, you do need the flywheel puller and make sure you get the one specifically for the Kokusan flywheel because there's two different sizes um, and you need the uh, threaded bolt uh, for the tip of the crankshaft as well. You have to have this to be able to pull the um, flywheel off correctly, so don't try and do it without the correct puller. Okay, so now we know what we're doing, what we've got. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the bike. Um, this is really a pretty simple job. You only need access to the left side of the bike, and you're gonna need to remove the upper fairing here, which is this piece, and you can let the chin fairing just kind of droop down a little bit. You might want to support with a towel or something but with those two things out of the way we can get access to both the regulator which is mounted under here and to the uh, stator and flywheel which is under this cover right here it's a dry case uh, for the stator flywheel side so there's no need to drain the oil I take that back it's not a dry case but the sump is really deep and it will have drained back down into the bottom so there's no need to drain the oil you can do this without losing more than a drop or two um, okay so that's uh, everything we're doing and to get started we're going to go ahead and remove this we have a couple uh, allen head bolts up at the top here we have a couple that run along the inside and then you're going to need to loosen and remove uh, the bolts at the bottom so we can let the chin fairing droop a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and get the plastics removed and then we'll take a better look at where everything is all right so i have the side fairing off um, we can see the regulators mounted up here and to get started, we're going to get the uh, stator and flywheel done. So that's all under this case right here. Um, first thing I need to remove is the breather, which has three Allen head uh, bolts. I've already removed two of them. So I'm going to remove the last one. And I'm going to just kind of stick it out of the way over here so it's not going to prevent me from removing the cover. Next, you need to remove these 8 millimeter bolts all the way around the cover. Um, I've made a template here in the cardboard to hold them and they're already loose, I'm just going to pull the last couple out. Okay, so now I have all of those loose and I can remove the cover. So the first time taking it off, I already have this loose so it should come off pretty easy. The first time it can be pretty tight. Um, you can use a rubber mallet uh, to kind of tap around the edges and loosen it up. Um, you also have these flat spots here, here, and here that you can pry against a little bit with a screwdriver uh, to help uh, break it loose. Once you kind of break the seal, it should be fairly easy to remove and you can kind of move it back and forth a little bit to get it loose. So pull it off and you're going to be fighting the magnets in the flywheel. So it helps to kind of rock it back and forth a little bit and it'll come loose. Okay, so here is our side cover with our stator mounted to it. You can see, um, so the charging system was working great on this bike, but you can see by the dark spots around half the stator here that this guy was already running really hot and this stator's probably on its way out and probably didn't have more than a couple thousand miles left in it. So good thing we're doing that on this bike. So I'm gonna kind of let it hang here. And you can see its harness runs up here and is routed around the side and is plugged into our regulator. We'll worry about that in just a minute and we'll get the side cover removed. Um, so next, let's look at our flywheel. So we can see here our flywheel is mounted on the crankshaft and we have a bolt uh, holding it in in the center here. Um, to get started uh, removing the flywheel, we're going to change that first, we need to uh, remove the bolt in the center. It's a 17 millimeter um, and 
So Aprilia recommends a specific hold down tool uh, that will basically clamp around these flat spots on the flywheel and then it bolts in using some of the uh, cover uh, bolt holes and that locks up the flywheel and holds it steady so you can undo this bolt. So if you have an impact gun you can generally loosen it uh, by tightening and loosening back and forth a little bit with an impact gun to break it loose and then pull it out with the impact gun. You can usually do that without the tool however if this does not want to come out then you really should get the hold down tool. It's recessed too much for you to get a wrench on it inside so don't try locking it up with a wrench. You really need to use the tool if the impact won't do it. So I have already loosened it and I'm going to go ahead and back it the rest of the way out. Okay and then once you have this guy removed you can go ahead and get your flywheel puller out. So the puller from Aprilia comes uh, with two pieces. You have this center piece is what actually threads into the crankshaft to give you something to press against. And then you have the puller itself, which threads onto your flywheel with the large threads here. And then the center bolt, as you tighten it, will press against the inner bolt on the crank and pop this off the taper. So to remove it, I already have the flywheel loose, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You'll thread in your center bolt and you want to thread it all the way in until it touches and then you need to back it off a little bit to give the flywheel room to walk off of the crankshaft. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I backed it off maybe half a turn so there's a little bit of a gap but I still have a lot of threads engaged inside to support it. Then I want to back my puller bolt out so I have plenty of room. Line it up on the threads on the flywheel and tighten it up. Usually you don't need to hold these with a wrench, but you can, it has cutouts for it. So once I have it tight there, then by hand I'll thread in the puller bolt until I feel it touch the uh, bolt inside. So now I'm ready to go ahead and remove it. Um, you could use an impact gun to break it loose the last little bit. You can use a breaker bar um, and you can have somebody hold the uh, inner part with another wrench if you need to, to keep the flywheel in one place. So as you tighten this up against it, you'll notice it break loose and you'll feel the flywheel get loose a little bit on the taper of the crankshaft. At that point, you can go ahead, loosen this guy up and then unscrew your puller from the flywheel. Then remove your inner bolt that was attached to the crankshaft itself. Pull that out and then your flywheel will slip right off the crankshaft. So note, if you've done other uh, flywheel replacements before, you'll probably notice a lot of them would have a woodruff key on the crankshaft and would have a slot in the flywheel to locate it. You'll notice the Aprilia does not because it is not timed off the flywheel. This is just used for the charging system. So when you put it back on, it really doesn't matter. There's no specific way to line it up. You'll just slip it on. Okay, so we have our flywheel removed and uh, we're going to go ahead and put the new flywheel on and then we'll show you how to change the stator in the side case. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install our new flywheel, which we have right here. I'm going to go ahead and just set it on the crankshaft, press it in a little bit, make sure it's seated. Then I'm going to take the bolt and get it threaded in. So you want to thread it in by hand all the way until it is touching the end of the flywheel. Okay, so I got that in and it's tight by hand. And then I'm gonna use my impact gun to tighten it up. Okay, so now that that's tight, I have my flywheel completely seated on the crankshaft and the bolt tight. So that's good, now we can go ahead and change our stator. And what I'm going to do is cut the zip ties here that are holding the stator wiring in place. And I'm going to unplug the connector here from the regulator. And then we'll take the stator over to the bench and we'll swap it in the side cover. Okay, so we have our stator in the side case here. I've already loosened the mounting bolts for the stator, which are a five millimeter Allen head. And I'll loosen those three, I'm gonna remove them. And then we have a seven millimeter uh, bolt here that holds the wire clamp uh, in place. So I've already loosened that as well. And I'm going to remove it in the clamp. 
Okay, so then our stator should just lift up and you want to pull the grommet out of its spot and we can get it out of the way. Then we're going to take our new stator. You'll see that it has a metal wire clamp here that has to fit in a slot in the cover. So I'm going to line that up and it will drop down into place. And then I'm going to route my wiring in about the same location. Press the grommet into place. And then I'll put my stator mounting bolts back in. Make sure to use Loctite, uh, red or blue Loctite uh, on them. I'm just going to set them back in place for now. And then tighten them up all the way. And with your wires routed through the groove kind of right here in the side cover, then you can put your wire clamp back in place and use a little bit of Loctite on this as well and tighten it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and finish uh, tightening up the stator in its cover. And then before we put it back on, we're going to look at the side cover here. You'll see that there is um, like a silicone sealer um, instead of a gasket on this. So I'm going to clean all this off with a razor blade to make sure it's nice and clean. And then we'll put our new gasket in place and put the side cover back on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get the side cover bolted back up and then uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's back together. Okay, so we have our stator cover reinstalled. We have all the eight millimeter bolts around the outside uh, tightened up. Uh, we put our gasket back in. We used a little bit of black RTV silicon uh, sealer on both sides uh, to make sure it won't leak. And I've reattached the breather hose uh, here with its uh, three bolts. So that's our stator and flywheel part of the installation. It's pretty simple. Um, and now we're gonna go over and look at the regulator and we'll show you how to swap that out. Note that I have the stator wiring run over here just behind the radiator hose and I have it hanging here waiting to plug in to our new regulator. All right, so now we're gonna change out our voltage regulator. Um, it's mounted here with a, an Allen bolt on the back and a 10 millimeter nut on the front. So I've already loosened them, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. There is a little standoff that sits behind it as well. And then I can slide it off. Okay, so that's our old voltage regulator removed. Set it out of the way. Here's our new voltage regulator. It's gonna mount using the same hardware in the same location. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it lined up and mounted and then we'll show you how to plug it in. Okay, so here's our regulator installed in the original location. Uh, we have our wiring harness plugged in for the stator and the battery side connectors and I've got them kind of tied up together and routed so they're out of the way. So that's about it for your charging system install. I'm going to get the side fairing put back on and uh, the chin fairing tightened up. So once that's all back together, then we'll go ahead and fire it up and check our charging system. All right, so we have our RSV4 back together, our whole new charging system installed, uh, stator, regulator, flywheel, and gasket. And we're going to go ahead and check the charging system and make sure everything's working well. So I'm going to lower the bike down and we're going to use our new RM stator battery tester uh, to take our voltage measurement and check the charging system. And uh, we'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so now we're gonna check our new charging system on our RSV4. So we're using our new RM Stator uh, battery analyzer and charging system tester. Um, it has a, a voltmeter, uh, which is nice, and then it'll also show us the charge status of the battery, and as well as when the motor's running, it'll tell us uh, the charging system um, output, if it's good or bad. So uh, right now I have it attached to the battery. It just uses two alligator clip terminals that plug right onto the battery. So we're measuring our resting battery voltage, 12.1. It's showing medium. This has been sitting for a little while, so the battery's not at a high charge at all. It's probably 50% or so, uh, but plenty to start the bike. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. And if everything's working well, we should see our charging system run up to uh, this battery's somewhat discharged. So I'd expect we'll be in the low 14s, 14 14.3, 14 something like that. If the battery was fully charged and we were starting it up, we should see a little bit higher voltage on up to 14.6 or so. But you always want to check this after you install new charging system parts and make sure everything's working well. So I'm going to go ahead and fire the bike up and I'll run up the RPM a little bit. We'll see the voltage drop with the lights on and the fuel pump come on. And I'll go ahead and start it. Okay, so we're seeing good voltage at idle RPM, about 13 and a half. And as I bring the RPMs up, uh, 
and we're seeing into low 14s, which is just fine for a partially discharged battery. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the motor, and then we'll see the voltage drop back down to the resting voltage, and this will probably give us a half charge warning. Okay, so we've checked our charging system. Um, everything's working well. We're getting good output from our new stator and flywheel and our regulators working correctly. So that's how you use our new battery uh, tester and charging system analyzer and how you install the uh, Prilia RSV4 uh, charging system kit. So I hope this helped. Uh, do this yourself. Save yourself a, a big labor bill at the dealership because it's just not that hard to do. And check out rmstator.com. Hey, make sure to like our videos and subscribe to the RM Stator YouTube channel. Uh, we want to keep doing new installation videos. Uh, leave us comments and let us know what parts uh, you'd like a video for. Uh, let us know if you have any suggestions uh, or questions. We're happy to help out. And always check out rmstator.com for our latest products and information.